oh man, trying to two finger scroll on a Mac to go up one. Wow, that's terrible. Hearing Taskim is getting back into the digital console world is super exciting. The last one of theirs that I owned was the DM24 and I absolutely loved that thing in the early 2000s. I haven't seen the console in person yet, but we can look at the control software. So let's do that. So I'm taking a look at the Taskim Sonic View 16 XP and I've just downloaded the control software for Mac and we're gonna run it up here and see what we can see. I have not looked at this yet, so we will be looking at it together for the first time. And let's see what we get for text here. Most recent versions are as follows, maintenance items. So just a list of some updates. They've done some housekeeping. Uh, still got a couple of little errors there, but solo button was added for each channel. So this is pretty early on updates here. And this is dating back to October of last year, December of uh, last year. It's March of 2023 right now, if you're watching this in the future. So let's run this up and see what we get. A little under the weather here today, so excuse the voice. 99.7 megabytes on your computer. Let's see what we get. Let's run it offline. All right, so let's just click through and see what we can see in the offline version. Um, no other tabs up here to work with, so let's start here. Open source software license. Okay, interesting. So we can name our custom layers. Gotta go hit apply. Interesting. So like triple clicking doesn't actually, so like a lot of the standard Mac action. So like normally if you were to double click, it would select that and triple click would select all in the field. That's not working. So let's say show opening, hitting enter doesn't do anything. Tab doesn't take me to the next field. So a little janky to start with virtual slot. So I don't obviously have anything, but if we wanted to configure say a Dante network in each, we could do that. Holding a control key during a drag operation gives you either fine or course control. We'll say fine. That's cool. Weird. Okay, so there's no save, so I guess I just close that and seems to stay there. The home button doesn't do anything. Wonder if that, what does that do? Doesn't do anything. Interesting. Okay, let's see what the menu button does. So we've got all of our setup for the mixer in here. Goodness. Interesting. So you can set your reference level, although this doesn't. So this is not a click. This is a scroll with your scroll wheel or two finger scroll to change this. You can't click on the other thing. Goodness, this is really all over the shop as far as consistency goes. Um, and that's just weird. Like, let's go. Okay, so home takes you back from there. So if I want to get to that metering page again, where do I go to get to that? Because I had to go to menu and then mixer setup to get to metering. And then I can see all my meters. And then that takes me home. I can't scroll left or right or swipe or anything. Huh. Like I'm large faders. Oh goodness. Those are like the biggest faders in the world. Sends on faders. Okay. 
It looks like we got some user keys to get to those things quickly. Some mute groups. Okay, that all looks fine, but it's just really weird. If I want to get to my meters, I've got to go to mixer setup and then meters. Like these shouldn't be on mixer setup. This should be something I can get to from this top layer. I should be able to jump over and look at my meters or look at my mix and overview without going into menu mixer setup. That's a little bit bizarre. And then we do have other things that are actually to do with the mixer setup, like assigning your talk back and uh, using the oscillator to send tone certain places. That's appropriate to be in mixer setup. Um, same thing with setting up DCAs, mute groups, uh, monitoring soloing configuration, all of that is appropriate to be in here, but it just feels like this top level thing, unless there's some other way to get to this that I'm just not seeing, um, that's a little bit weird that that's how you get to your meters. And what was the other thing there? Mix and overview. Interesting. So here in the mixer config, we can configure channels one through 40. And also on the other tab there, you've got bus configuration, but you've got direct out pick points from input uh, to post high pass and post fader, uh, delay point input or pre fader and insert point uh, batch setup. So when you change these, you're gonna change all channels to these settings at once. So that can be handy for quick setups where you need to reconfigure the board uh, all at once on the fly. So that's pretty handy, very configurable looking setup. Just feels like these maybe shouldn't be in this menu, but easy to change that in the future. Front panel setup, user key setup. Okay, so this is where we assign our user keys. Cool. And if we wanted to change like our mute group. Interesting. Again, that's a scrolly thing. You can't click, you gotta scroll. We could change that to tap tempo. Again, that drives me nuts. Oh man, trying to two finger scroll on a Mac to go up one, wow, that's terrible. And I can't use the arrow keys either. So that's terrible. Like that needs to be adjusted. You cannot two finger scroll. Like if I wanna go to send on and off up to monitor control, on an Apple Magic Trackpad, that's impossible. So that's going to need to be looked at because there's no way to change that otherwise. And then you've got settings for foot switch, GPIO in and out, which it looks like the mixers include that. So that's really handy for GPIO users. There's plenty of that on board. Then we can set up our fader layers, which we see up here. Um, yeah, interesting. So I'm seeing layer one is one through 16, layer two, 17 through 32. But what? That's not what it's saying over here. Right? Like, am I missing that? Like, so. There's one through eight, layer two, nine through 16, layer three, four, five. What is this? That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they're doing here, but that just doesn't look like it corresponds to this at all. And again, we're scrolling. Yeah, so that's bizarre. So these are split, but you assign them as a batch of 16 inputs, but then the faders, like that just doesn't make sense. Make it 16 layers or make this eight selections. This is silly, but maybe I'm just completely misunderstanding the intent there. I could be wrong. And then under brightness, goodness, what a incredible amount of other preferences. I, I, again, I've clicked on front panel setup brightness. That's all I've clicked on here. And I get preferences to do with the USB keyboard type and snapshot store confirmation and the reference level again, but I can click on it even though I'd already set it to 18. Now it's not really sure what the 
Deal is there. Fan control. You can go from auto or manual. Turn the fan speed up or down. I like that. So you can turn the fan all the way off if you're in a quiet recording setting. So you know, things like that are making this look like there's a ton of potential and they'll definitely get some of this weird stuff cleaned up. It just, right off the bat, the software looks a little um, beta testy to me, but... Again, I could be just completely wrong about some of this stuff. Let's see what's under rear panel setup, huh? Oh, then now we get Dante settings in there. Cool. So without having a network to be able to connect the hardware. It's hard to say how this actually all works in practice, but this looks comprehensive and like what you'd be expecting. And then we get slot set up again, assuming that'll tell you what's in the slot and available and then offer configuration from there. Word clock output settings. So again, you can switch over to the Dante or clock the Dante network off the console, however you want to work it out, depending on your situation. Oh, and it is important to mention there, because you can see there's built-in Dante, uh, and then there's also two different slots that can hold Dante cards. So quite a bit of uh, IO there, but Dante is built into the console as standard, which is very nice. You don't have to worry about uh, getting a card or chips or any of that stuff. And then we get into control network stuff. Again, without the hardware, you'd like to think that all works as expected. We're back into the foot switch, GPIO and user key. So that's another way to get to that. They've just given you kind of a top level access to that in another menu. So it just seems like this menu system's very uh, pre-production. They're still kind of working out the kinks of how they want to lay this all out. And maybe they're getting feedback. I don't know if there's a beta program for this console. I haven't been invited to one if there is, but uh, maybe they're working out these kind of things with some beta testers and trying to figure out exactly where all of this is going to go. Because right now there's some redundant stuff. There's some stuff that doesn't make an absolute ton of sense. Um, but Tascam generally knows what they're doing. Like the recorder player is not here. Can't get to that. Um, and they tend to be very good with the, the firmware inside their handheld recorders and all that kind of stuff tends to be very reliable. Although I haven't used much of their app-based recorders that have come out recently and I'm not really sure how good they are. But that's it for the menu items and you can kind of see what's going on here on the home layer. Um, kind of give you an idea of what these modules look like. You can unlock it and choose between our analog source and our Dante or slot uh, inputs, which is pretty cool. And then in the analog, we get uh, analog gain controls. We get pad on and off, stereo link, uh, all the expected uh, input controls that you get on every console these days. I like the keypad, kind of has like a Apollo era kind of vibe to it here um making that really big i'm not super sure what you would use that for uh can't make it do anything so it's not like i can type in here and tell it like what i want to do so i'm not really sure what you would do with this it's interesting though okay so you can kind of use it for some stuff um, all right, that's, that's not what I typed. I typed 100, right? So there's 100, enter, 105. And you can't, what? Okay, that just kind of jumps in weird increments. Uh, pan controls. Wow. You click on something and like the whole thing changes. So you get pan for the different, uh, sends here. Wow. This is okay. So you drag left or right and you can enter that on the number pad, which I guess on a touch screen, this will be a lot faster probably to use the number pad. So that's cool. 
Here we've got our module view of the gate and we can look at the EQ compressor. Let's have a look at the, the, the gate's got threshold range, attack, hold, decay. It's not just a single knob or anything. The EQ looks like a four band uh, parametric with the high pass below that. So let's see if the low, can we turn that on? Okay, so you can be a bell type or a shelf. Very good. How about the mid? Low mid. I'll turn it on. And then we get uh Okay, so I'm trying to so you can only swipe left or right to increase these. So like Clicking on this and pushing up or down on your mouse isn't quite as responsive. You've got to go right or left. There's an RTA that you can turn on and off per channel. That's pretty cool. I'm wondering if when you do that, does it, like some other consoles, ask you to release it from a different source or if it's all automatic, something, again, would need the hardware to check that out. But EQ looks pretty straightforward, you know, four bands. Uh, let's see, are there any limitations? Nope. The low band can go all the way down to 20, all the way up to 20,000. Love that. Hate to see limited band parametrics on these consoles because there's no reason for it. And in some live situations, you really need uh, to be able to move those around to where you need them quickly. Uh, the compressor, same thing. We've got all the expected controls, uh, different key in source select, which is always super helpful for ducking or doing anything advanced with your compressor. And yeah, again, without hearing it or playing with it with actual audio, it all looks like it should. Hopefully it works the way we would expect. And then per channel, you've got the send. So here are our sends to our 16 uh, buses, and then there's 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm not sure those effects. No, the effects are below. So I'm not sure what these are. Just looks like mixed buses that are set to post. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the whole deal. I'm not really sure uh, about the layout and how it would actually feel to use until you know you get some audio running through it and see how it actually responds. One of the biggest things about this is, um, you know, if I did a whole thing here if I've set up a whole show uh okay I can increment a new okay here we go cool so yeah I can how do I oh man it's really really quite see I can't triple click I've got to like select all man uh and then enter. Oh, enter worked there this time, but it didn't work on the other pages. So if I go back to recall initial data, that's everything gone. Um, now I can go to show one, recall show one, and my show's back. So yeah, that works. Um, I have to dig in a little further to see how that works on the actual hardware and transferring shows from the hardware to the console and between the smaller console and the bigger console and back and forth. But for a first look at the Sonic View 16 offline editor, it looks like it's got a ton of potential. I haven't used a Tascam mixer professionally since the old DM24. Used to have one of those hooked up to a Nuendo recording rig back in the early 2000s. So I'd be excited to try this out. I like Tascam a lot and I definitely trust them in the reliability end of things for uh, console. They have built some fantastic products over the years that have done very, very well in extremely demanding professional environments. So leave any comments you've got down below. What do you think about these consoles? And are you going to give them a try? Are you considering them at all for anything coming up? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.